July 20, 1969. I just see it uh, as a beginning. Uh, not just this flight, but in this program, which has really been a very short piece of human history. Astronaut Neil Armstrong, the mission commander, became the first human to step onto the lunar surface. Millions around the globe were glued to their television screens as Armstrong descended the ladder of the lunar module, Eagle, and placed his foot on the moon's dusty surface. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Buzz Aldrin, pilot of the lunar module, joined Armstrong on the moon's surface, leaving their footprints together in the uncharted territory. The astronauts spent approximately 21 hours on the lunar surface, conducting experiments and collecting samples of moon rocks and soil to bring back to Earth for study. After the glory of the Apollo era, which culminated in Apollo 17's 1972 mission, humanity's gaze shifted. The moon was left untouched. Not a single human has walked on its surface since Apollo 17, December 11, 1972 by Eugene Cernan and Harrison H. Schmidt. The moon was left untouched, unexplored by human hands for decades, a silent witness to our shifting priorities towards space stations and shuttle missions closer to Earth. In 2017, NASA announced Artemis program with the goal of returning humans to the moon and eventually landing the first woman and the next man on the lunar surface as part of Artemis III. Imagine, after more than half a century since humanity last set foot on the moon, we are on the brink of witnessing this awe-inspiring feat once again. But this time, it's not just about leaving footprints on the lunar dust. It's about doing so in an era where cutting-edge technology and high-definition video as we prepare to watch these historic moments unfold, the sheer magnitude of this achievement, coupled with the power of social media and live streaming, has the potential to unify humanity in a shared experience of wonder and inspiration. The impact on our global consciousness, with the realization of our capabilities and the boundless possibilities ahead, could spark a new era of innovation, exploration, and a deeper appreciation for our place in the universe. Imagine if we can go back in time to late 1950s. The Luna program, launched in the late 1950s by the Soviet Union, was humanity's first endeavor to reach another celestial body. The program began with Luna 1, which in 1959 became the first spacecraft to escape Earth's gravity and fly past the moon. However, it was Luna 2, launched in the same year, that achieved another groundbreaking achievement by becoming the first human-made object to impact the moon's surface, demonstrating the feasibility of reaching the moon. Luna 3 continued the program's success by providing the first ever images of the moon's far side, a region completely unseen from Earth. The early phase of the space race leading up to the creation of NASA was characterized primarily by the development of rocket technology and the launch of the first artificial Earth satellites, such as Sputnik 1 in October 1957 and Sputnik 2 in November 1957. These milestones marked the Soviet Union's early dominance in space exploration. This led to what is known as the Sputnik Crisis in the United States prompting immediate action to catch up with the Soviet Union's space exploration capabilities. In response to the Soviet Union's initial advances in space, the United States government realized the need for a centralized space agency to coordinate its efforts. This led to the creation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, in 1958, which became the spearhead for America's civilian space endeavors. This contributed to the intensification of U.S. efforts to achieve significant milestones in space, including first-ever human mission to the moon. The U.S. also launched a series of lunar probes, such as the Pioneer and Ranger missions, to study the moon. Although early attempts faced failures, these efforts contributed valuable knowledge for future missions. 
NASA initiated Project Mercury, launched in 1958, United States' first human spaceflight program. Its primary goal was to put an American astronaut into Earth orbit and investigate humans' ability to function in space. The intense competition and rapid developments in space technology set the stage for Yuri Gagarin's historic flight on April 12, 1961, aboard Vostok 1. Gagarin's successful orbit of the Earth was a monumental achievement for the Soviet Union, securing its lead in the space race and demonstrating the feasibility of human spaceflight. In May 1961, in response to the Soviet Union's early space achievements, we go into space because whatever mankind must undertake, free men must fully share. President John F. Kennedy set a bold national goal for the United States to send an American safely to the moon and back before the end of the decade. This announcement marked the formal beginning of the Apollo program, which was aimed not just at lunar exploration, but at restoring American pride and demonstrating technological superiority. The United States spurred by the Soviet success, accelerated its efforts, culminating in Alan Shepard's suborbital flight on May 5, 1961, and eventually leading to the Apollo program, which aimed to land humans on the moon. The period leading up to Gagarin's flight was marked by fierce competition, significant achievements, and setbacks for both nations, laying the foundational knowledge and technology that would shape the future of human space exploration. Following Gagarin's success, the Soviet Union continued its Vostok program, sending several more cosmonauts into orbit. Notably, Vostok 6 carried Valentina Tereshkova in 1963, making her the first woman in space. Alexei Lonov performed the first ever spacewalk, Extravehicular Activity, or EVA, during the Voskhod 2 mission demonstrating the feasibility of astronauts working outside their spacecraft in the vacuum of space. The United States completed its Project Mercury with several manned orbital flights, culminating in Gordon Cooper's day-long orbit in 1963, which demonstrated the U.S. capability for extended human spaceflight. In 1965, NASA initiated Project Gemini, which focused on developing space travel techniques essential for Apollo's lunar missions. Gemini achievements included the first American spacewalk, long-duration flights, and the first spacecraft docking maneuvers. Before Apollo could take off, the United States focused on developing the necessary capabilities for human spaceflight through Project Mercury and then Project Gemini. These programs aim to master orbital flight, spacewalks, rendezvous, and docking in space key technologies for a moon mission. Parallel to the United States efforts, the Soviet Union was also developing plans and technologies for a manned lunar mission, including the development of the N-1 rocket, which was intended to be the Soviet counterpart to the Saturn V. However, the N-1 faced numerous technical challenges and failed to achieve a successful test flight. This period also included success of Luna 9 in 1966, achieving the first successful soft landing on the moon, transmitting the first close-up images of the lunar surface back to Earth. Subsequently, Luna 16, 20, and 24 through 1970s were the first missions to return samples of lunar soil to Earth. The space race was deeply intertwined with Cold War tensions, with each side eager to demonstrate its ideological and technological superiority. Space achievements were not just scientific milestones, but also potent symbols of national prestige and the effectiveness of each country's political and economic system. While the race to the moon in space was a competition, it also captured global attention and inspired international interest in space exploration. The Apollo missions, in particular, were followed by millions around the world and laid the groundwork for future international cooperation in space, such as the Apollo-Soyuz test project in the mid-1970s. The Apollo program spurred rapid technological developments, 
including the creation of the Saturn V rocket, the most powerful rocket ever built, and the Apollo spacecraft. This period was characterized by significant investments in research and development, pushing the boundaries of material science, computer technology, and aerospace engineering. The successful landing of Apollo 11 on the moon in July 1969 marked a culminating moment in this race, achieving Kennedy's goal and marking a significant victory for the United States in the space race. It demonstrated American technological and organizational prowess and shifted the balance of perceived space exploration leadership from the Soviet Union to the United States. The success of Apollo 11, along with the earlier failures of the N-1 rocket, intended to power Soviet manned lunar missions, led to Soviet reassessment of its lunar exploration ambitions. While the Soviet space program continued with significant achievements, including robotic lunar exploration, and the development of space stations, the direct competition for manned lunar exploration diminished. The Apollo 11 mission captivated a global audience with an estimated 600 million people watching the moon landing on television. It was a moment of unity and wonder, transcending geopolitical boundaries and inspiring people worldwide about the possibilities of human exploration and achievement. The mission ignited interest in space and science, leading to increased investment in scientific research and education. The technologies developed for the Apollo missions had wide-ranging impacts on computing, telecommunications, materials, science, and other fields. Many innovations from the space program, such as miniaturized electronics and advances in medical technology, found applications in everyday life. The success of Apollo 11 inspired generations of scientists, engineers, and astronauts, setting the stage for continued exploration of space. It also entered popular culture, influencing films, literature, and art, and shaping humanity's vision of its place in the universe. Since the Apollo missions, lunar exploration has evolved significantly, transitioning from the direct human exploration of the moon to a period focused on robotic missions, international collaboration, and the development of technologies aimed at enabling a sustainable human presence on the lunar surface. Apollo missions concluded in 1972, and lunar exploration entered a law, especially in terms of manned missions. The 1990s saw a resurgence in lunar exploration interest with missions like NASA's Clementine, 1994, and Lunar Prospector, 1998, which orbited the moon to create detailed maps of its surface and to search for evidence of water ice. The turn of the century, however, reignited a fiery interest in our lunar companion, driven by robotic pioneers. Nations across the globe launched a series of ambitious missions. NASA's Clementine and Lunar Prospector set the stage, followed by Europe's Smart One, Japan's Kaguya, and China's groundbreaking Change program, which kicked off in 2007. These missions peeled back layers of the moon's mysteries, revealing tantalizing clues of water ice and resources that could fuel future interstellar endeavors. Let's fast forward to the Artemis missions. On January 9, 2024, Abby Donaldson from NASA headquarters unveiled the blueprint of an era-defining adventure, the Artemis II crew. The crew comprising of CSA astronaut Jeremy Hansen and NASA's own Christina Koch, Victor Glover, and Reed Wiseman took the ceremonial walk from the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building to the Artemis crew transportation vehicles. This wasn't just any walk. It was the preamble to humanity's next giant leap scheduled to orbit the moon by September 2025, with Artemis III marking a historic landing near the lunar South Pole in September 2026. Artemis I mission marked a historic achievement in space exploration, successfully launching the uncrewed Orion spacecraft aboard the Space Launch System rocket from Kennedy Space Center on November 16, 2022. After a 25-day journey covering more than 1.4 million miles around the moon, Orion returned to Earth, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean on December 11. This mission tested deep space exploration systems and demonstrated capabilities for future crewed missions, setting the stage for Artemis II. 
which will carry astronauts around the moon, and Artemis III, aiming to land astronauts on the lunar surface. The Artemis program aims to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon as a stepping stone for future manned missions to Mars, signifying a major leap forward in space exploration. The Artemis III mission is a significant step forward for humanity as astronauts will land on the moon again. For many, especially the younger generation, this event will be incredibly inspiring. It will show them the importance of pursuing careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and encourage them to dream big. Can you imagine the impact of watching astronauts walk on the moon again in just a few years? Picture this, people around the world glued to their screens, witnessing a monumental moment in human history. This isn't just about marking another achievement in the annals of space exploration. It's about opening a new chapter of human unity and progress. Watching Artemis III's lunar landing will not just be an extraordinary spectacle. It will be a powerful reminder of what humanity can achieve together. It's an invitation to dream big, pursue innovation, and look forward to the future of space exploration. Can you imagine being part of this historic moment? While the Apollo era symbolized the U.S.-U.S.S.R. rivalry for space supremacy, Artemis missions reflect a modern collaborative approach involving multiple nations, including the USA, aiming for lunar exploration and beyond. These missions underscore not just the pursuit of scientific knowledge and space exploration, but also the significance of international cooperation in achieving these ambitious goals marking a new era in space with profound impacts on future lunar and Mars missions. As of early 2024, NASA is stepping up its moon game by planning to have astronauts drive a new lunar terrain vehicle, LTV on the moon by 2030. They've picked three companies, Intuitive Machines, Lunar Outpost, and Venturi Astrolab to design this next Jin Moon rover. The rover will explore the moon's south pole, eyeing water ice that could support future astronaut missions and even provide rocket fuel. In addition, Artemis IV's mission is set to construct Gateway, humanity's first lunar space station, following the Artemis III moon landing. This mission will involve astronauts living and working in lunar orbit enabled by a series of launches and the debut of an upgraded Space Launch System rocket. Gateway will serve as a hub for scientific research and a stepping stone for future human missions to Mars, marking a significant leap in long-term space exploration and international collaboration. Transitioning from the historic U.S., Russia, Lunar, and Space Race, the Space Exploration Arena now welcomes a diverse set of players, including private companies and international partnerships. These current endeavors aim not only to revisit the moon, but to establish a sustainable human presence there and beyond, highlighting a significant evolution in our approach to exploring the final frontier.